Hi, I'm Anthony Gelati, and I'm gonna show you how to master your domain. And today, what we're gonna talk about is heating and air conditioning systems. An excellent way to save money is to properly use what you already have. And you'll cut down on service calls, which we know could get very, very expensive. Now, first things first, everybody has a thermostat. There's different brands, there's different kinds, but the key is to always stay in your comfort zone. Now, it's usually in between 63 degrees and 70 degrees depending on your sailing height and make sure that you don't have any drafts coming out of your windows, doors. You don't want money flying out the window. In this case we have high sailings and as we know heat rises so we want to go a little bit on the higher end 68, 70. Now I'm going to show you some tips that every homeowner should know about their heating system and their air conditioning system, okay? Which is basically the same system. Now remember, you want to save money on service calls and you also want to save money on power, electricity costs, gas costs, depending on what service you have, all right? In this case, we have a gas-powered furnace. Now with a gas line, we see it always will have a shutoff valve. What you need to know about the shutoff valve is when it runs parallel to the line as it's doing right now, that means it is on. If you need to shut it off, you want to turn it perpendicular. Now a good safety tip, trick of the trade if you will, I always carry some powder in my toolbox and let me explain why. If you want to check for gas leaks, powder is the best way because it's nice and light all right, if there is some air or some gas coming up, you'll be able to see exactly where it is. Looks like this is fine. You do want to know the source of a gas leak, so when the service guy comes, you want to show him exactly what the problem is. Now, a couple of times a year, you want to be able to change your filter, okay? This is something that would cost $200 for a service guy to come, and all he's going to do is exactly what I'm going to show you right now, all right? Okay. You have your system here first. Now, first and foremost, the system has a kill switch, all right? The system's gonna shut off as soon as you take the door off. It's for safety. If the door is not properly put on correctly, the system is not gonna work. Do not call a service guy for this. Check for all the simple problems that you might have overlooked beforehand. This is the filter you wanna change every six months or so, depending on the type you get. You could get a cheap one. The problem with the cheap one is you have to replace them every month or so. I would get a higher end one, worry about it twice a year. Figure out the size that you need from the old filter, all right? It should be right, clearly marked on that, and buy a new one. Comes with simple directions, which way to install it. The arrow shows the direction, wire side towards furnace fan, furnace fan right there, wire side, and as simple as that. You don't want to spend $150 to $200 for someone to come in and do that. You also want to clean all your ductwork out. The best way to do that is through the vents. Just get a dust rag, anything you want, shop vac, the easiest way you could do it, and get up there on a ladder and clean out <coughs> all your vents. <coughs> Now this particular furnace is in a simple area, it's just in a utility closet. A lot of times your furnace will be in your attic or in your basement. Now those systems will have kill switches. These kill switches look a lot like light switches and sometimes they accidentally get turned off. You don't want to spend $150 to have a service guy come in and flick on a light switch. Now to locate your kill switch, keep in mind it's always going to be within arm's length of the access of the furnace. So if it's in the attic, it'll be somewhere near the crawl space door where you could just uh, turn on the light of an attic. Sometimes it's right next to the light switch, so pay attention to that, all right? If it's in a basement, it's usually as soon as you open the basement door, before you go down the stairs, it's usually to the right or the left of the door. It looks exactly like a light switch. I can't stress this enough. If your furnace isn't working, before you call a serviceman, check all light switches that mysteriously don't do anything. Being able to service your system yourself is going to save you a lot of money in the long run. Believe me, you only want to call a technician if there's a real problem. Let the system work for you. Don't work for the system. On the next Master Your Domain, Anthony teaches us that being polite leads to plum perfection. If you want to learn about simple carpentry, just say please. Benito.